Sir Ramaphosa, a very warm welcome to ENCA and the heartiest congratulations on your appointment. Thank you very much. You certainly have uh, kept the country waiting until the 11th hour. One senses maybe that you might have been reluctant to take the job. Yes, this appointment or election is something that I did not go seeking out. I was minding my own business. I was not, it's not something that I willingly stepped into. And I had to reflect on it quite a lot. And I had to do some soul searching, also talk to my family, and do a lot of consultation with a number of people. And in a way, I had to get out of my comfort zone because being in business meant that I was in a comfort zone in terms of you know, doing political work. I was a part-time politician, which I thought was sufficient. Mm. But now this is full-time. So having done all that, I also needed to consider the call from the members of the ANC and the branches. And in the ANC, you respond to calls that the people make, and you're essentially a servant. And when they call, you cannot say no. You've effectively waited 20 years for a job in frontline politics. Uh, there was one newspaper headline earlier today that uh, referred to you as the chosen one, your time has come. Is that how you see it? No, that's not how I see it. Uh, I've always been in, on the National Executive Committee. I've always been involved in the political formations of the ANC, serving in various committees. But very much behind the scenes. Uh, yes, very much behind the scenes, and in some instances being on serious committees like finance and the disciplinary committee. So I have been there, but they decided that they would like to kick me to another position. But you have exercised long-term political patience. Uh, we not, don't have time to go into the history of, uh, of 20 years ago, but is there a, a sense of vindication now that you have this job and possibly at some point uh, your eye on the top job? No, it, it isn't a vindication uh, in the sense that, you know, you're vindicated if, you know, something, you thought that something had gone wrong or people thought something had gone wrong. It was being deployed in a particular role and working there and continuing there until people decided otherwise. And being put here is the will of the people. And there is no other job that I have my eyes on. I've been elected. That, 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 old, that old line about the best president South Africa never had? Oh, no. I mean, that's, that, that is uh, completely nonsense. Uh, in the ANC, we serve in the positions that we are deployed in, and I've been deployed in this position, and I intend to do the best that I can. I'll give it my all. All right, bluntly put then, what do you bring to the party, and more importantly, what do you bring to the government? I'm not in government, and I'm not about to go into government. Well, we can talk about that I'm, in a moment. I am in the ANC. What I bring is you know, the experiences that we all have as members of the ANC, our inherent ability to do certain things, uh, the endowments that we have as individuals, like, you know, being able to play in a leadership role, and uh, the, the experiences that the ANC has put us through. I've been fortunate the ANC has put me through a lot of experiences, you know, writing the constitution, participating with others, my trade union work, and now I've been in business for a couple of years, and that has exposed me to other processes, and I guess a combination of all that, and being able to work with other people helps a lot. Some are talking about a salvation role. There's commentary that says that uh, your President Zuma's get out of jail free card, that in time you will bring legitimacy to an administration that is mired in controversy. No, not at all. I mean, in this role, I am President Zuma's assistant. 
I am there to support what he does in the ANC, and clearly because the ANC is the party that's in government, what we do in the party has an impact on what happens in government. So in that sense, yes, what I will be doing and what the Secretary General will be doing will have an impact. So people need to see us as a collective. Let me come at it from a different way then. How much support right now do you believe a beleaguered President Zuma might need? Certainly beleaguered in public perception. Well, I don't see President Zuma as being beleaguered. Uh, I see him as, as a, a very strong president, a president who has led from the front. What has he done that is most outstanding and prominent in my mind is delivering to the nation the National Development Plan. We've had President Mandela who delivered us to freedom, President Mbeki stabilized, and President Zuma has actually delivered a blueprint for the future, a blueprint to 2030. Now, that is the leadership that he has shown leading from the front. Mm -hmm. Which so ambitiously says that unemployment will be reduced to zero by 2030. It's a highly uh, ambitious plan. Do you really believe that the Zuma administration has the capacity and the wherewithal to deliver on that? Yes. And, and you will play a key role in that? The blueprint, which is the National Development Plan, seen in combination with the new growth path, the infrastructure uh, plan that we have, and the industrial plan that we have, all those instruments seen in totality within the framework of what has been set out by the vision that the National Development Plan sets out will be able to deliver the objectives that we all have for our country. And Mr. Ramaphosa, you've been riding in many ways along with Minister Manuel, riding point on this National Development Plan. Um, what role are you going to play in ultimately implementing that? I am the Deputy Chairman of the National Planning Commission. Trevor Manuel continues as Minister in the Presidency, as Chairman of the National Development Plan. And we are now, as the NPC, beginning up work of identifying areas how this plan can be implemented. And I am also going to play a key role in helping that plan to be implemented. What do you see as the single, single biggest deliverable in the short term that that plan has to, uh, has to affect? Infrastructure. The infrastructure bold plan that the government has come up with is, is the most ambitious, as the government says. It is the biggest this country has ever seen. Is it too ambitious? I don't think it's too ambitious. It is doable because it has the levers that we can put our hands on and make sure that it is implemented. And what that program will spawn is, is, is uh, inf uh, economic growth, uh, job creation, and it will also help in as far as economic empowerment is concerned. And underpinning all what we have to do has to be education. The skills development thrust that our nation has to embark on is huge. And the National Development Plan stresses that a lot. And we are now going to put in place various programs to make sure that our education begins to yield the results that are necessary to, engineer, uh, to uh, generate growth in our economy. Mr. Ramaphosa, we have to take a quick break, but just before we get there, um, one other question that was raised is uh, which Cyril Ramaphosa has emerged? Business is delighted with your appointment. Mm. Unions, similarly, mm. are delighted. Um, it's going to be particularly difficult, surely, to appease all of these constituencies. You might end up being very unpopular. Well, you know, being in politics means that at times you'll be popular, at times you'll be unpopular. That's, That's the understatement of the day. Uh, and uh, you just have to do your work. And uh, the way I work is to try and see whether consensus can be built. You're good at negotiation. Are you going to call Rolf Mayer, by the way? He's a good mate of mine, and uh, wherever he can help, Rolf Mayer is always prepared. To Should he put his cell phone on? 
He should put his cell phone on indeed. <laughs> We're in conversation with uh, Cyril Ramaphosa here on ENCA. We'll have more for you in just a moment.